friend Dick, I hope you're doing well. I hope you had a lovely Easter, I ate all the chocolate eggs. I had about five, don't tell my mum. Probably even ate hers. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to get into this story with you this week. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the parable of the lost son. The word parable might confuse you a little bit, but don't let it. Parable just means a message that God wants to communicate to us as his children. Um, so this story is about the parable of the lost son. A few weeks ago at Frantic, when we were actually on and we could all see each other, um, I did a preach about the Bible and reading your Bible and how important it is. So this week, I do actually want you, if you do have your Bible, you can go on Google online and look there. I want you to turn with me to Luke 15 verse 11 and we're going to be reading from there. You can just read along with me as I tell the story. Um, this story is about a man and his two sons and one day the younger son he came up to his father and he said dad I really want some of that money that you've got that you were going to save for us it's called inheritance um, can we have it now and so the dad decided to split it between them equally and gave half to the older son and half to the younger son and a few days later the younger son packed all of his stuff and he went off to another country, he spent all the money, he spent it on silly things like drink and food, and he wasted all of the money in only a matter of days. And suddenly, this big famine came across the land, which basically means that all the food ran out, the, the land went dry, there was no water, and he'd spent all of his money, so he couldn't get anything for himself. And he, he thought to himself, how, how am I gonna eat? And one of the local citizens that had a pig farm said that he could actually go and work on his farm for some money. And as he was feeding the pigs, he looked down at the pig trot that had all the pig food in it and he thought, oh, I am really hungry. And guess what he did next? He did, he ate that pig food. Yuck. I wouldn't be eating pig food no matter how hungry I was. But he ate the pig food and then he suddenly thought to himself, do you know what? This is silly. If I was living at home with my dad, I'd be able to eat all the food and have all the riches. But he was worried that if he went back to his dad, that he wouldn't accept him because he'd done all these wrong things and he'd spent all of his father's inheritance that he'd given him on money and, and women and drink and, and clothes and food and all the things that we don't really need. So he was ashamed of himself and scared that his dad wouldn't accept him. And it says in verse 18... I'll get up and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But he decided to go home anyway. And as he was going home, his father saw him from a distance. And he was so excited. He ran up to him with open arms and he grabbed his son and he embraced him. And he called to his servants to, to bring a robe and a ring and all of these expensive things and he said bring the fattened calf so for them to kill the cow and bring it they were going to have a big feast a big party and celebrate the fact that his son had returned and he was once lost but he'd come home and the son was a bit confused because he thought his dad was going to turn him away and he was going to be really angry with him but in fact he he embraced him with a hug and, and was so happy to have him home because his father said he once was lost but he is now found and the older brother who had stayed at, at home with his father and worked for him and done everything he said was really angry with his dad because he said, Dad, I've been here this whole time. I haven't spent the money. I've done everything you've told me to and I don't get a party. You never killed the cow for a feast and a party for me and my friends. So why does my younger brother get it? And he was really angry and upset. And it made him have this kind of, um, yeah, this kind of prideful anger. And it made him resent his dad and especially his younger brother who seemed to get everything he wanted without any consequences. And it says in the Bible... In verse 25, now his oldest son was in the field as he came near the house he heard music and dancing. So he summoned one of the servants and questioned what was happening. Your brother is here, he told him, and your father has slaughtered the, slaughtered the fattened calf because he was back with him safe and sound. And this is when he became angry, so the dad came out and pleaded with the son. But he replied to his father, Look, I have been slaving many years for you and I've never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me a goat so I could celebrate with my friends. 
But when this son of yours came, who has devoted your assets, who has spent all the money on all the food and drink and all of the things that aren't useful, you throwed him a party and you brought him the fattened calf. Son, he said to him, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And the whole point of this story about the lost son in the Bible is to remind us that no matter where we go in life and no matter what we do, no matter what bad decisions we make or, or wrong mistakes, God will always, always be there for us with open arms because he loves us and he loves you. And what he wants to tell you in this story is that it doesn't matter what you do, it doesn't matter if you think you're a bad person, that you've done wrong things, that you've done too many things for God to love you, it's not true. God will love you on your hardest day, God will love you when you think you're ugly, when you think that you're not worth anything, maybe when mum and dad tell you that you're not good enough. God will always be there to embrace you with a hug and with open arms because he is your father and he loves you and you know, a personal testimony I have, an example of this in my life, is my older sister. Um, she actually went away from God for, for a few years and she wasn't interested in living the Christian life and she spent a lot of her money on things that weren't good for her and, and she would say she wasted a lot of her years rejecting God and, and going against his word and what was true and what she believed in. And a few years back, she actually started coming back to church again and she started to believe in God again and she got back on track with her relationship with Jesus. And she came back, just as this son in the story, he came back and God said, he once was lost and now he's found. And when people come back to Jesus, you know, they were once lost in this world and spending money on things and making bad decisions, but it didn't matter because God was always going to be there. And just like when my sister came back to church and came back to God, he was there with open arms, as were her family as well. So it doesn't matter what mistakes you make. It doesn't matter how many Easter eggs you ate <laughs> last week. It doesn't matter what you think you've done that might be too wrong or too bad for God. He will always love you and he'll always see past all of those things and all of your mistakes and just see you for the person that you are that he's made you to be. Because he loves you, Frantic, and we do too. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the story and um, we'll hopefully see you guys soon. Take care, bye!